ran out Slardar because it looked really good and the OG immediately did pick it up. So you will have a good lane matchup in the lane against Spectre. Like Spectre doesn't really do anything to this Slardar unless there's going to be like they focus on the off lane. They do manage to. Okay, so is this. Uh, yeah, that's a five Viper. Oh, okay. that makes the lane a little easier, oh. but he can die quite quickly if tossed back by the, the tiny. You have to be really hot on your positioning in this lane. Do it does help them quite a bit, though. I, I, I love the Beastmaster pick. Silent. I think it at least brought the lanes 45, 55 or something. In oh, back I, in their favor, it was way lower before. I think OG does have uh, an extra step in this one. Uh, having a Nature's Prophet played from potentially on the off lane against Viper 5 and Spectre works really nice for Viper. And then you have Slaughter against the Beastmaster. You don't like to play into Boar, but uh, it's also Marcy. So playing into two melee heroes. This might be the lane setup for OG. So are you feeling confident here that OG is going to be taking no this one? Who, who are you swinging your I vote for here? I can't believe this, but I'm actually going for OG 2-0 versus yeah. PSG OGD. I, the first draft that they had, I felt that it was decent. This one, I think that it's just better. <laughs> Okay. I also I'll hit for LDD. Ooh. I really like the uh, Marcy pickup. I think it's going to like provide them a lot more activity on the map. I think this beast monster is just going to want to control like top side of map really hard. And like if they can pull a lot of attention there, I'll hit his item timings. It just kind of rides a lot on the punch. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll find out soon enough if OG can 2-0 here. Casters, take us away. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> All right. <laughs> we did it. We did the worst <laughs> intro in major history. Congratulations, guys. To be clear, yes. it started with it, it the animation from Valve. Right. Uh, we're in game number two, OG versus PSG LGD. OG with a 1-0 lead, which was shocking. Uh, more so, not because they lost necessarily, but because they lost so badly. Yeah. And now we have the Pudka, and I'm glad that, for once, I'm glad that Jenkins is with us, because you are a Pudge expert, or self-proclaimed, at least. No, I'm, I'm terrible at this hero. Okay. Of course, everybody is. Uh, this hero is quite pathetic, but one of the most fun guys to watch, and a little bit less... It was like, kind of like a 10 out of 10 on the pathetic scale before, and now that Flesh Heap is an actual ability, uh, very literally, and the fact that it's not completely useless, he's like a 7 out of 10 on the pathetic, pathetic scale, until he gets the Ags, and then he's a god. Okay. Quinn, what are your thoughts on Pudge? I think the hero is better now that it's been in a long, long time. I think the hero is actually a viable core some games. Uh, I've seen there's a lot of Chinese uh, players who have experimented with Pudge versus Puck. It's like actually a counter pick. Uh, Ori has done this sometimes. Nothing to say has done it some in China and pubs and stuff. So they clearly like think that Pudge is a counter to Puck. I'm sure they had this in mind going into second phase. Uh, but part of the reason why they gave the Puck away. I'm curious to see how it pans out because there are heroes that Pudge is not very good against uh, besides the Puck. Zamar, right click battle. The hook comes in from nothing to say. Some damage being done to Amar, and you can see why with that support Viper getting out the poison attacks. Will this lead to a kill? Looks like indeed it will. Who gets the first blood? Trying to give it to nothing to say. One more right click does it, and that is beautiful for the mid laner on a PSG LGD. One last hit, he's going to get his bottle. <laughs> Uh, he got the, the tree ant as well to start things off, so yeah. a great start for him. And like you said, uh, China has had the most success with this. Obviously, we cast a lot of Europe and especially NA, and it was quite bad. <laughs> it was really yes, there was only four Pudge, and it's yeah. very bad. Uh, you, I don't think you played any core Pudge this DPC, right? In officials, I do not think so. Yeah. But in scrim, how did those go? Yeah, how did those go? Top secret info, my friends. Okay. All the Gaben gets so to know. not so well. Not so well. Yeah, that sounds kind of bad. I thought we could spoil my feet. <laughs> my secrets here. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think of the both lineups? I think this Beastmaster pick is pretty salvaging for LGD. I think before that pick, the heroes were sort of very like vulnerable to getting run at and ransacked by this like punk slaughter sort of like all around in the fight and being really annoying. Um, so I think this Beastmaster gives them more like structure and allows them to sort of stand together and like actually fight back and gives someone to help this pudge. Uh, and very fire set actually stays alive. Nicely done. But now with very little HP. Jenkins, what are your thoughts on the lineups? 
Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go for the Pudge lineup and say that one's a lot better. Now, I, I feel like uh, LGD, they weren't messing around with the lanes in this game. They start with the Marcy Viper. We talked about it. It's like there's very few heroes that do well against the Marcy Viper in lane. Nature's Prophet comes out and then they flex so that there's the Beastmaster on the off lane instead. I thought that was that was pretty cool. Uh, and I, I do feel like Pudge is actually a Puck counter. I, I can't say exactly what it is, but in fights, it does feel like you can pretty easily kill a Puck. And Puck, clearly, he's not that wide. He's dead, but will Amar be the trade? One more right click will do it from Ame, and he finds him. So one for one, but favoring PSG LGD as the Viper is the support. I'm getting forced out of the lane for now, though. And in terms of like the Spectre gameplay, um, I mean, we can talk about itemization later, but does this feel like a game that he can take off? Because the Juggernaut game was, I mean, the laning stage he lost horribly, just never caught up. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to be taking off this game, but I do think he'll have a better start. His Viper's probably going to sacrifice. I imagine there will be some more kill trading going on. Um, it's kind of volatile at this point since Viper just TV'd back in. So if there's a bit of a mess up. Nice oh, there. whoops. Oh my. That's a Jenkins hook right there. Now that's the, because of that low ground, it's like yeah. the, the Z axis. Yeah, the Z axis is a bit of a problem. So that happens. It's like that with Pango, too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yuragi getting some help thanks to the Echo Stomp from Seb. Yuragi to kind of reset here. Seb with that extra damage, trying to use it to his advantage, but instead he's just going to get disposed and. Disposed of. Yeah, he wanted the boar. He was he was going with the big damage, trying to like two shot the boar, but hits it once and he's like, oh shit, actually I can't kill this. But a, a little too late. All right, and when it comes to, I mean, BZM, obviously the witch blade is going to be the standard item opening for him. And top lane, okay, they get a very valuable kill onto Yuragi. And I mean, how is this lane going? <laughs> There's a lot of back and forth, it feels like. I think it's pretty bad for Dyer because this lane gets way worse for Dyer as things move on. It's like most Furion lanes is the early waves are insane because the hero has like a billion damage and like two extra attacks. Um, but as things progress, the hero doesn't actually get any spells. So as they get like level two and three boar, they might just keep chain feeding here. Okay. Um, they do have the bright spot that Puck can potentially TP up there and turn things around, but in this matchup, he's like mega rushing which play with no boots, no null, no anything like this, because you kind of want the damage against Pudge, so the downside of that is he's not going to have this boots early to rotate top, and it's possible he's low on regen, because, you know, Robo Magic just give you any regen and not playing raindrop. Well, trying to contest the rune. Tiger gets off the nice avalanche and toss, and BZM takes it. And now that's going to turn into a kill into nothing to say absolutely punish. Beautiful TP from Tiger. I didn't think he was going to get there in time, but it really worked out for OG. Yeah, that is uh, that is pretty rough. This Puck hero, when it has a free game, is an absolute monster. Um, they really don't have the means to gank this guy mid so much, so they're just going to keep pressuring side lanes and just let mid be mid, I think. <laughs> Another dispose coming from Jin Q. Faith Beyond. Echo Stomp comes. Is it enough time? No. With the Boars looking to finish off Seb, Faith Beyond gets credit for another kill there. Uh, maybe we'll see some more hooks on runes instead so he can get refreshed. So he doesn't have to put himself in that position. Uh, but from nothing to say his perspective, the phase boots will be the opener. But are we going to see. I've seen more position one pudge, so I don't know if there's any difference, but are we going to see the typical it's rush of like a Vanguard or a Hood or whatever and then into Ags? It's different. I've seen a lot of Blink Rush from mid two, okay. depending on how active you think that you need to be for the game. Uh, there's Vanguard, Hood, I, I think like third item Aghanim Scepter, maybe even maybe even fourth item Aghanim Scepter, maybe that's a bit griefing. But you can go like, if you're including Boots, I think fourth item Ags, but like yeah, Blink is probably, probably the item of this game. Okay. Almost goes on the set, not able to get to the high ground though, onto the cliff. Yeah, you can sort of offer some other things. I'm actually, I've seen a lot of um, Chinese pledges do like phase boots into BKB. Uh, this game BKB is kind of crap, so probably won't buy its first item. Uh, I can definitely see the Vanguard. But even Vanguard, uh, they have the Slaughter Amp and they have quite a bit of magic damage, so it's like not that easy for them to itemize in like some super you know, like ideal way. You have to crush onto Y, nothing to say. Now has his hook back as Taiga finds himself inside that disgusting rod. Along with the right clicks from Y, that is a beautiful combination and nothing to say. Second stack of Flush Heap. Bottom lane is going very well for Radiant. The Slaughter Hero does not like to be behind like this because he doesn't have an HP regen source, right? So he functions on making you low and abusing that back. So if Ame is like able to man up like this and make him run away, at some point this Viper comes back and if the Slaughter is not in a position to like be dominant and boot you out, 
there's going to be a Beastmaster encroaching very quickly on the other side of the map if OG doesn't get like a cute turnaround fight there. And Omni went for an urn too, so if they can get one kill onto Amar, then like anytime he steps back up to the lane, he's just going to take an urn charge and a few Viper hits and he's back down to like 40% HP again. Yeah, you can see him totally full zone from the lane. In contrast to last game where he's getting every single CS and Ami's getting kicked out, it's like the complete opposite. He's like cowering in fear, like a level down with very little gold, which I don't think is a position that Amar plays from very, uh, very much. You can see in the mid lane, nothing to say. Despite that death, still pretty damn even in the CS department, so... He's, like I said, other than that, pretty much uncontested right now. And feels like it's going to be pretty difficult to kill him without a coil into, like, a toss-back situation. Uh, obviously, uh, Amar not really playing the Slardar that we're used to seeing on other players. Although, he's kind of made other Dyer's people adopt this style. of going like the Mask of Man is just pure right-click. So, he's not really going to be rotating a whole lot to start the game. My theory on the Mask of Madness build, why I think it's... I know Amar's always done this, but I think it's a lot stronger now that you have the little puddles that follow the, the person when you Corrosive Haze. You can just, like, stick on somebody now. Like, if you, if you haze them and run after them, like, you need somebody to TP in to save them, basically. Mm. Potential rune fight coming. It looks like they're actually going to sack the rune and set Tenth's top tower. Yep, set, initiated on. Disposed. They don't even need to bother dismembering. So another stack of flesh sheep for nothing to say. Who's off to a very good start. So has his phase boots full wand, and now 800 into the blink dagger, like you mentioned, Mr. Jenkins. Yeah, I mean, while things may look uh, good for LGD right now, there is this Witchblade coming, and that's the thing about this Puck when he goes to build, is he's going to AFK farm for a while, but he's going to get the Witchblade very fast. So there will come a point where suddenly his damage just has this massive spike, and OG, despite being down some gold maybe, or some tempo, will have a lot of kill throws. Avatar, but an instant TP coming from nothing to say. It's going to be a little late. Of, uh, the long TP time. So Jin Q gets cleaned up with no response. And Faith Beyond kind of left his own devices right now, and he has the Helm of Dom going for the Overlord next. And this hero has felt like it's just been kind of... I mean, you guys were talking about this pregame. Quinn, you didn't think this is a very... I mean, you said it was strong, but not OP. It feels like every game we've passed, and maybe we're biased. Every game we've passed, it has felt like it's just taken over the game in a lot of ways. I mean, when this hero has a free game, the hero is dominant. It's like almost it's like almost unlike any other hero when it has a free game. The way the boars are able to just, like, and the vision are able to just, like, take over areas and just, like, push you out, like, at an extremely expedited rate. It's almost, like, uncomparable. Uh, but the hero has does have, like, weaknesses early and can kind of trample, but, I mean, here's the Witchblade timing. They're going to try and you can shut him down. Yeah, and they're going to smoke with it to reveal uh, from the side of OG. Jin Q. Essentially looking to break the smoke, but Faith Beyond would be a big, big kill. Oh, oh it is broken on the high here. ground, so, yeah, not going to find a space. In fact, they're going to get Hurricane by the Wild Wing, but Yuragi is here to try to help out. Jin Q. He's going to have to dispose, and here comes the first haunt of the game into a roar. So PSG LGD kind of turned this around, flip flop what OG wanted to try and accomplish. Setting up bottom for the slaughter kill, I think they may get it. Yeah, the Mar. Still no ult coming out from Y, but gets off the crush. It's really not going to matter. He is slow to the absolute cross, and nothing to say again with a kill. And if he wants that blink, he'll have it right now. Radiance Middle Tower. Back under to that attack. smoke play, uh, or the Dyer's smoke break from LGD. Ooh, BCM walking right into all these creeps. Yeah, he's gonna get the coil, he's gonna break immediately at half HP for Faith Beyond with the Nature's Prophet coming in as well. So OG able to get something after giving up quite a few kills. And Yuragi has the hand of Midas, by the way, so he's looking to farm. I mean, actually, talk to me about that item, Kim, because it feels like it has gained popularity beyond what we expected, especially, like, DPC, I feel like we almost never saw it. Yeah, I honestly don't know what made this item spike in popularity so much. I'm not even sure if it's objectively good or if it's just one of these flavor of the month things where everyone sees, hey, I'm at bottom Midas, you'll see that? Maybe it's good. <laughs> and then everyone else starts buying Midas. Right. Yeah, my theory on it was, was essentially that, that, like, people started getting it as a response to other carries having Midas. Where it's like, okay, so as long, so just so we don't fall behind their carry, like there's probably some other solution to it, but just because like there's not enough time before the major, let's just buy a Midas on our carry as well. Oh. Yep, it's definitely worked out for some teams. Uh, others tower. not so it's much. Nothing to say. Looking to blink reveal. Smoke is going to be popped. Instant dismember, but the stuns are coming. Avalanche coming out. And nothing to say. Actually, right off the bat, a nice.
CTs coming in from OG. They're only going to lose their support tiny for now. As Seb looks like he's walking away to the coil. He's spending off to two with the instant roar to try to counteract this. And then this is going to get punished potentially onto the puck. And down goes BZM. So maybe not on the same page as the rest of his team. But still, they found the punch at the beginning of the fight. Jamar's a psycho. This is insane. He's continuing on with that puddle like you're talking about the extra move speed. Radiance middle tower is under attack. We're gonna get some damage on the tier one tower, but Faith Beyond trying to defend, and we can see nothing to say coming in on that Putka with the beautifully done, but the avalanche cancels the dismember. And nothing to say gonna get crushed now as the Faith Beyond Wild Axe is continuing to stack, so Yuragi has to be a bit careful. And even Ame has come to play. The right clicks from Innocence, but another blinking. I'm about to say instant bash from Amar, but Amar's the one that died this time. Hook not connecting this time as now they turn their sights to the tier one as suddenly this game just got super action packed. Yeah, this blink is actually owning. I didn't realize he just doesn't take any damage to the stupid clutch he's done. <laughs> blink yeah, that's true. true. And Taiga stuck on the wrong side here. He's gonna get disposed by Jin Q as Innocence kinda sticking to the high ground. He's gonna get sprouted as Taiga looks to be a free kill for PSG LGD. But you can see Innocence holding his own ground against most of OG and Roshan actually is the one that takes out Taiga. But PSG LGD still gonna be happy with this overall exchange as they I was going to say they're going to push the tier one, but maybe they continue to fight. I guess, I'm not sure. In, so in the initial fight that led to all of this happening, nothing to say blinks in and didn't get off his flesh heat. And so he just he just melted. He looked like the old punch, which is pathetic. And we have a haunt, and that is for Yuragi. So bottom lane, punished again. PSG LGD. Yeah, that was a really fast setup from ZQ. He, he showed up bottom lane, and like half a second later, ZQ TPs. You see him pinging on the map, and they immediately honk on this. Like, it's a super clutch play. And in a game like this, where your heroes get rolling super fast, like, there's going to be a point where they get to this super dom, they get to this manta, punch which getting a bit more HP, and there's a world where Dire's heroes can sort of get trampled. Like, you get jumped one time and obliterated, and the map can sort of fall apart. Dire are scanning. You see a smoke from OG. I'm gonna find Jin Q to start. The Avatos is there, but the hook save. Obviously, nothing to say. Can't do too much more as Jin Q gets off the rebound, but that last right click is enough to take him out in the end. But a turnaround now to BZM with the dismember. Avalanche trying to cancel it. Illusory Orb is out, but he's taking too much damage and will fall as a result as Taiga just trying to toss that fat, juicy pudge away. Really successful for the time being and keeping himself alive, but a roar from Faith Beyond and another. Death, it looks like for Yuragi. This flesh heap. Nice avalanche again, but it's still double kill for Y as Taiga. He's the one running, still an earn charge on him. Dagger coming up. Dagger's there. Avalanche is going to be up in one second. One and more axes, and that with that earn charge will be enough as again PSG LGD getting a great exchange. Yeah, it's definitely worrisome for OG with this Fanta and the Beastmaster timing coming up. They can also take Roche very easily, and it's not particularly easy for Dyer to contest. They don't have any blinks yet. Uh, Star might be starting to close in on his, but he's quite behind. So if Radiant plays in formation, they play around the Beast units, they play around this Pudge, like looking with hooks and blink dismembers, it can be really hard for Dyer to potentially contest a Roche. Radiance middle tower. And nothing to say, working on a BKB as the Ogre Club right now. And. I mean, for a mid pudge, Radiant's how important is it for you to be towards the top in the net worth? I know it's a weird question, but it feels like with the blink build, you're kind of fighting a little bit more and not farming Radiant's as much. Yeah, I think staying up with the rest of the game in terms of net worth is like quite important. It's not a hero that functions very well with no items. Like if you're if you're fat figuratively and literally, then Dyer's you I know a lot about that. Thank you. You looked right at me when you said that. Appreciate that. That's not true. <laughs> Don't look at them. He looks you right at you. <laughs> um, the hero likes money. Yeah, that's also me. Thanks. No, yeah, that's how uh, you look right at you again. That was very. <laughs> this is slander. <laughs> well, OG. Uh, you say LGD into the pit. They get a free Roche. And that is an Aegis for Ame on that Spectre. And I'm a little surprised they only have a 2k lead, if I'm being honest. Yeah, if you're in that fight, as we talked about. Yeah, true. A little mini Alchemist game. Golfing down that goal. Stop saying everything's yeah. alchemist. Everything's an alchemist <laughs> game. You said that about Doom, and Ali was like, no, it's not yeah. like that. He agreed. No, he, he didn't. He was just joking on camera, and then off. He's like, yeah, I just wanted to let you know I really <laughs> agree. <laughs> uh, nothing to say. Almost done with the Mithril Hammer, so essentially a recipe away from the BKB, which 
You said it's not the greatest BKB game, but to be able to channel Dismember is kind of required. Yeah, it is a it is a very big deal. They only have the crack to cancel it or a Slaughter Bash. Um, and it's quite hard for Slaughter to just run in this game. Mm -hmm. I feel like after the BKB, nothing to say probably just goes for, like, all armor items. Like, yeah, Shiva's, I mean, Lotus is a bit of a, like... You know, more of like a support item. You know, maybe maybe Shiva's AC. That that's that sounds cool. Does it look like a core build? Yeah, yeah. You want that a core build? Yeah, you want to be a core. Yeah, that's right. Smokes on each side. That the tier one tower, tower not able to be fallen. denied. So LGD get another bounty their way. We have TP coming to Marcy. Very important Dyer's there. Bottom Super Dom has been acquired. Oh, we got the blink dismember, but the instant cancel again. Taiga with the quick fingers. It's a toss off as well, but he's slowed to a crawl. This will likely be the death of him, trying to deny himself to the tomatoes. But the dispose is there in time. The LGD starting to snowball a bit. 4K lead, still with the Aegis, another three minutes. Yeah, I mean, this stage of the game, if it ever, like, if a team ever reaches this point where you start to have to lead your triangle because you can't fight it, things can start to disintegrate very quickly because now you're sort of, you have to split up to farm, otherwise you get no gold, and you're splitting up, so you can be picked off very easily, which is sort of you can see right now. ZinQ knows, and he's looking in these tree lines. Yeah. They might even haunt for vision if he doesn't find him right now. He's got the right read. Right there. So they did haunt her vision. They did, and now they're gonna go on top of your rock. He, he TP's out in the nick of time. And now Seb is the one that they shall pursue. Attempting to TP. Will there be a stun? No. That was really close to being really bad. No keen optic on Marcy, otherwise that, that would have been really bad. It feels like OG have done a pretty decent job of wasting a bit of this Aegis timer. They haven't really got a whole lot out of it yet. Dyer's yeah. Bottom tower is under attack. I don't know if this game Dyer's gets easier for OG going late, though. Like, I feel like Pudge does really well against both Nature Prophet and Puck. Even Sardar late game doesn't feel that bad for a Pudge because you do eventually build armor items and you have the damage block. Yeah. Spectre against Puck and Nature's Prophet, like you destroy both of those heroes. Oh, the Maran Company. Their smoke is broken by Jin Q. BZM gets off a nice coil and waning with onto two, though. Nicely done from OG as they just take them out swiftly. Looks like that's a fine move. Ripping TK still want to fight as the mark gets initiated on. Most of this member damage was done with the rock combination, and that is one death for OG now. As Taiga attempting to run away, but nothing to say with this haste rune. Not much it can do against that. So despite being down in numbers, LGD able to even up the fight. Yeah, that's the, about the best type of scenario which you can possibly look for. This smoke, they got this just Radiance this right angle, this combined coil. Because, I mean, sort of like Jenkins said, if Dyer's Radiant scaling is not is bad, attack. like if they're in formation and they Radiance get this hawk, they play off these hawks and they get the jump, like the supports will die instantly to this blink pudge. And once the supports are dead, I don't think Dyer's cores are able to actually stand and fight. There's too much like swarming going on for Radiant's heroes. So it is a lot of matter about the jump, but Radiant just has way better ways to like push out these lanes and be manly and actually look for the jump with the haunts. Oh, there's going to be more than haunts soon as Ame was working on an Aghanim Scepter and he is 600 Radiant's away from finishing Ags, which I believe the skill is called Shadow Step. I'm not positive on that one. I usually call it Mini Haunt just in case. I also do. Yeah, yeah. Mini Shadow Step. Is that what I said? Sure. I'll go with that. Uh, but yeah, the, having something like that is... At first when it came out, people were like, eh, I don't know about that. But then they lowered the cooldown. And it just feels like he can be everywhere all at once. You don't need to expend that like really long cooldown haunt just to get one pick off. Yeah, it is a very, it is a very big deal. The map starts to get super spooky. You can even just use it to poke people. If there's some guy with low regen, so then he gets, he gets, whoop, he gets baby haunted and he loses half his HP. Yeah, and there, there was um, like LGD likes to make multiple moves at the same time, and that it, it, it's like the best item to let you do that, the best skill to let you do that. There's the baby haunt. Yeah. Poke. Yeah. Nami not continuing. The BKB was Papa Yuragi, and he had some OG members near him. He think he's going to be fine, but Jin Q. Trying to find Taiga. Had the rebound move speed, nothing to say. We'll have to give up his pursuit, but looks like Ags is going to be next on his list. So... You were right, Jenkins. Well done. You got the same item that uh, every Pudge has gotten this entire DPC. <laughs> All right. 
He didn't actually go the rock talent either. He went uh, he went the plus armor talent. Oh, really? really? Yeah, usually you go the 16% rock slips because when you get the eggs. But uh, I guess he has good to save the other one. Dismember, BZM is just... Oh. Face shift. Can he blink out of this? But the axes are there as well, so... Nice shot from LGD, covering all bases with Jin Q. He's gonna get gone off, but here comes the shadow step, and Ame is gonna try to turn it around with the help of Jin Q, and that turns into a triple kill for Ame. That seems to be how the Pudge Puck matchup goes when going late. I, I, I've seen that a lot, where you'd think that, like, because Pudge is kind of fat and slow, that Puck, with all this mobility, would be able to get away, but, like, Pudge can chase with Hook, and then you can stand on the, the phase shift with Rot, and... Even if he uses the little the, the little blink coming from the puck silence, like still like you're probably Daya's going to be kept in the rod, and attack. you have the blink dismember for, for when puck is showing on a creep wave. I, I don't I don't know exa exactly why I want to say puck is a or pudge is a puck counter, but it really does feel like that. I bet the matchup is like the win rate probably isn't that good for puck. Yeah, it's definitely a combination of a lot of things, and I think this matchup can sort of be rectified for Puck if you have other heroes that can go in for you and be manly, but the issue is his bottom lane went so terribly that he doesn't actually have a Slaughter or a Tiny able to like fight with him early, right? It's like him and an yeah. ET pairing up, and ET is never going to go in, so you end up in a situation where Radiant has this last pick beast match that's hard to run into, and your runner inners are behind, and you end up in this weird spot where you're just kind of like waiting on this Puck, like looking for opportunities, and that's not really where you want to be when Radiant has, like you said, like three blink stuns or something. Eventually, you're going to buy an Orchid on the Spectre, and and it, your game's not getting any easier. Do you th I mean, it looks like he's going S and K, but do you think that a Lincoln's might be something that he will need? As this dismember has basically taken him out of the game. Missed hook this time, but the dispose into the right clicks from Ame. He bash comes out from Lamar. I can say he just really wants those flesh heap sacks. He's going to get another one. 11 no, for he him. Didn't. He was, yeah, he was, was farming the creep wave, or he's farming the creep camp. He's trying to leave the kill to his Spectre. Yeah, I'm just, I've Sunday seen that so many times, but they just don't seem to... Is it because it doesn't scale nearly as well? I don't know. I think people might just forget. It's just not a mechanic. Like, nobody is a punch specialist in the pro scene, right? No. Now, Jenkins is technically... Well, he's <laughs> no, dip not, three not now. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. I mean, but that the, Gremlo guy plays it, but like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That would be in the pro. But 450 AoE is really small. It's horrible. It's horrible. If you, hit the, if you get the kill with the hook, though, it does extend the AoE. Yes. Course. I see it oh, becomes interplanetary. That's correct. If you get the kill while they're in fountain, do you get a flesh sheep? Does it matter where they are? It's only with hook. It's only with hook. Yeah. Okay. Dyer's There's Jin Q. The help of Triceratops here. Yeah. He's secured yeah. tier 2 tower in the top lane, and that's going to give him the OG outpost. Double damage. Does spawn in the top? I lied. I read the tooltip. It does work in Fountain if you get the kill. As long as you get the last hit. Okay. That's good. Oh. So, so Urn of Shadows would work too. Yes. That's very big buff for Pudge. <laughs> very big. It's extremely important. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 11 stacks is a lot at 24 and a half minutes, even with the reduced strength that you get. It used to be. It used to be three, right? 33. Yeah, you have 33 strength. Yeah. Those were the days. Were they though? He was actually worse back. <laughs> he was worse. That's a lot worse. Back to the oh, we're gonna have the jump and a mantis stop taking out the science and a mass TP from LGD. Has nothing to say. He's gonna miss the hook, but the rebound is there from Jin Q and a toss, so LGD, they only get one and it's a support. At the very least, Ame lives. In fact, I think he was fine after using that manta. Yeah, I mean, LGD just really wants this fight right now. They can, they know that they're way, way stronger and they're looking for anything they can get. I think OG has actually done a pretty good job of keeping this game within arm's reach. It's not completely out of control yet, despite how hard it's been for them to maneuver around the map for such a long period of time. But you can see in just the way they're, like, OG is playing, it is, it is a game of cat and mouse for them, and it's not a game of cat and mouse is getting any easier or a game that they're that happy playing. Like, LG is going to keep hunting, they're going to keep scaling. The Slaughter has Mom and Blink. He's not, like, some super beast Slaughter who's going to carry the game. Like, it is very worrying if you're OG, because this game is, it's hard to play, and you're surviving, and you're playing kind of well. You know, you, you evade, you only lose some support here or there, but it's not like you have a big timing coming. You're just, it, it almost feels like delaying the inevitable. No big timing. There's no item you think that will... He, Yuragi is closing in on the Silver Edge, so I feel like that is one place where maybe Ame help. can die. Because uh, he feels kind of unkillable at this point. Although this will definitely help him not die, even into the Silver Edge. Yep. So that's going to be a free Aegis and Shard for LGD. Nice forward here. 
And will the shard go to Ame with the dispersion? What? Or will it go to Face Beyond with the Haunts? How did he know he was there? We're going to see the Shadow Step come out from Ame. But BZM looks to be A-OK. -okay. All right, so Amar is a wizard. that shard? Yeah, Go on the shard watch. Yeah, let's go check out the shard situation. Oh, Taiga, he's going to get jumped. And JQ with all the cash in the world. And it was the Beastmaster. So you got the, the old dive bomb coming out from Faith Beyond. I think it was the Spectre, okay, actually. Okay, it was the Spectre. That's right. Exactly what I sent. Yes, on point. Uh, I mean, the Spectre one's pretty decent. You get that free Spectral Dagger every seven seconds or something. But here's the jump from OG. And another bash to come. Ame is just dead. So that is a, an Aegis already off. You can see the rest of the PSG LGD are not even remotely close as the Elder Titan all just deletes him. And Seb, this high five will not be reciprocated because Ame is dead. Yeah, Ame has 25 base armor right now and only plus two regular or plus armor so the et aura just put them to zero they completely shredded them. yeah that's a that's a rough one that is one of these deaths where you're you're like i don't know you you get this agus you're talking about after you're so strong go run go the run them or push other lanes whatever and you can kind of distract you maybe you lose focus and you you forget that hey i can actually die all by myself like super by myself and we'll see what og can get out of this death timer of course not that he would want to buy back in this situation, but if there was a big fight, this is the best hero to buy back on probably in the game. Uh, with that haunt still available, but... Taiga finally got his blink, by the way, Radiant's so they're looking to make a move. Okay. Yep, smoke up from OG. You can see LGD not really wanting to play into the hands of OG at the moment. Yeah, I mean, they know once the Spectre's back up, the game reverts to how it was before. It's not like anything changed uh, them getting this kill, so... They're still in a dominant position. They can still play off these jumps. And if they get a good fight, then they will close the map out again. But Puck does have these bots. They have Furion. They're going to rat the silence, and they're not going to make it easy for LG. Seb takes a time bolt. He's still working on that Ags. Uh, 1,500 away from it, in fact. He's going for Ags. That's, the That's a five oh. shot. Yeah, it's talk, talk to me about that. My hand to hold that spot, Jenkins. Thank you for looking right at me. As the haunt that actually expanded the Damar, attempting to TP out, but the roar keeps him in place. And LGD find another in the form of Taiga. So three pickoffs across the map as LGD look to be taking firm control of this game. I, I like that Seb is going for the eggs just because I feel like looking at. You know, Yuragi's hero, Nature's Prophet looking at Puck. I don't see these heroes scaling to beat a Spectre unless some other heroes are also scaling and doing very well. And so, like, if Seb has eggs and, you know, he's the cleave talent and the game goes, like, really, really late game, and, like, if a bar can somehow get his net worth back. Oh, that was close. That was close. Like, I think OG needs some crazy late game scenario to win this one, uh, or some very good pickoff based on LGD's mistakes. Yeah, but the fact that the Aegis was taken out so fast, now I don't even know, <laughs> you just wait for the next one? or Because their, their high ground isn't, I mean, they have Beastmaster, and I'm not sure if they're going to get the shard on the Viper, but it is a support Viper. Your high ground building taking is kind of eh. Yeah, you're most likely planning to just keep hunting them for the foreseeable future. They have insane pickoff. OG is smoked right now. Available, nothing to say. He's gonna try to take. He's gonna get Avatar for his trouble. The hunt for BKB. Trying to go for this member, but again, Seb's ult is a lot of damage. He, he had a haste too. He opted not to pop it and to go for the dismember there. Maybe he thought that the healing is the only way that he would survive that. So 60 seconds without nothing to say. OG, perhaps with a bit of an opening. But obviously LGD extremely poised, as they have been for the last two years, it feels like. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. Well, they're not really going to do anything too rash, I feel like. I've watched a lot of NA Dota where that will happen. I think Quinn will agree. That, uh, no comment. <laughs> that will blow this lead easily. Oh, a Slardar Ags. Okay. Dang. My goodness. Amar. So now you get all these stats when you're on top of 
water. I, I mean, I kind of like this. I, he had the BKB queued up. I feel like if he goes in and soaks the dismember, soaks the Beastmaster Primal Roar, like these are things that go through BKB, right? But with that status resist, yeah, that seems that seems pretty good take, to take a long fight against the Haunt too. Yeah, but we're gonna see the Shadow Step, the instant crush from Amar, and Ame is gonna bail as a result. Uh, but yeah, not just from the crush creating a puddle, but like you said earlier, the Crows of Haze changes where it drops a puddle for you. That synergizes directly with the Agnus Scepter on Slardar. Very cool to see. So he's gonna be way tankier now. Might get chucked. Yeah, he could get chucked out of it, which would be an issue. Into the final the world is the hit. And yeah, he's tanky, but uh we guess you need just do a million damage. Yeah, I don't think that worked out the way he was anticipating. <laughs> he's like, oh come on, come forward me, I dare you. Alright. Now there's an ag on set officially, so that's the BKB based on how many units you hit, right? Yes. It is very strong. He can punch people quite hard. Spectre is pretty bad against the ET late game in some circumstances. Um, oh, Coil misses from BZM. He's gonna have to high tail out as a result. I can say jumps in. No, yeah, this is on cooldown now. Zed is mega dead. Gets off his ult, but really to not much avail. Another hook. Oh, Yuragi somehow able to sidestep that. Tiger not gonna be so lucky though. That's two quick kills there for LGD, and still three dead with Amar on the sideline, as now they can poke the high ground. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, and still not even going for Ags, nothing to say. Actually switched it up and went for the Shivas. I don't think he needs that much. I, I agree, I agree with this build. I mean, the plug up for Ags now is because there's not much else to buy. Maybe like Strength Blank, if, if anything. Middle That's a set of racks for LGD, and opting to potentially go for the top. No, blink out before the waiting rip connects. What a beast. Such quick fingers from GQ. Gets a lot of use out of it by rubbing that belly, of course. That seems to be good luck for everybody. Practice for the fingers. Even for Sonics. Yes. That was apparently good luck. Helped you get that one game victory. That belly rub did occur. Yeah. Not by me. Yeah. Jack. Jack did the honors. Jack's a good, a good lad. Yes. There's a basher now online uh, for Ame. And obviously he's had that Scotty for quite a while. He is uh, pretty ridiculously farmed. I don't know how you kill this guy without getting a perma stun with the break. Like you need so many things to fall in line to get this kill. And even if you do, the rest of LGD are extremely farmed as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's just these birds flying around all the time, and there's this Pudge who can blink in and give Shiva's vision. Like, there's just you just see so much, and it's so hard to play if you're OG because there's so many heroes that just die if they get going on. Not everyone is as evasive as the Puck. Tiger um... looking to go for the outpost, but he's gonna die instead. 10k lead for PSG LGD. Nothing to say. Still smoked up, so could go for this kill. He's gonna go in with. I think the Lincoln Spear was there for BZN, so this member will be canceled, but still a lot of damage coming out from nothing to say. They're gonna clean up seven quite easily. But at the very least for OG, they don't lose BZM. Oh, Yuragi's getting bashed in his own face on the Manta style, and so much damage coming out from the Desolate. This might be GG territory as PSG LGD absolutely crushing in game it. number two. 37 12 scoreline. And this uh, was a great performance from basically everybody in LGD. Started with uh, the Puka, of course. Did we just witness another shellac? Was this a, a backward shellac? I, I don't think this was a top hat, but yeah, it was, it was on the low scale of shellac.